Hi, it's Catherine Bird. I'm here with my shaman sister, Michelle Hawk, on Shaman Sisters Sessions. This is episode 88. We are going to be talking about integrity in your spiritual practice. And this is going to be integrity all over the place. So in your personal life, in your practices, in your work, in the world. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit good, great conversation. But before we get started, just make sure that you are subscribing to our YouTube channel and sharing if you find this information valuable. And we would love to hear from you and your comments below. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thanks. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. Um, Kat, you are over in England right now. So we're back to our, our virtual format. We had um, our last several episodes. We were both in the same place when we recorded them. So that was fun. Um, but how's, how's everything going in your trip? Uh, England is amazing and beautiful and gorgeous. It's so green and lush. And uh, there's so much history. And it's just, it's, it's picturesque. It, it, you can't, like, it, it, you can't, you can't describe how the word is definitely picturesque a lot of this country is so far. Mm -hmm. So I've been really enjoying myself and getting out and seeing things and uh, meeting people and having a great time. And awesome. uh, we'll be in Glastonbury for the solstice this week. And uh, yeah, lots of traveling around, lots of traveling in, uh, in Europe this summer. Beautiful. Awesome. And I have, I do have to share cause I, in case you don't follow Kat on Facebook uh, and Instagram, she posts some really awesome stuff. And speaking of integrity, one of my favorite things that I saw you post was when you visited the tower of London and you saw the, um, the marks on the walls and you saw the plaques of why people were imprisoned there. And I mean, we know now knowing, uh, you know, there was like the flower of life on the wall and the orbits of the planets and everything. So they essentially had alchemists and they called them sorcerers, but people imprisoned in the Tower of London who were in integrity in their practice, meaning that they were committed, they were showing up, and they weren't going to stop doing the work. So I think that was one of my favorite things that you've shared thus far. And in case you don't follow Kat, I'd recommend going to pop over there. But yeah, just seeing throughout history, and these are all people, you know, the, the people throughout, you know, like Galileo, right? All these heretics or all these people throughout our societal development of our spiritual practice who have been so in integrity with their spiritual practice that they're persecuted, that they're imprisoned, that they're um, you know, institutionalized. And what we're talking about today, you know, maybe we run slightly less of a risk of those factors in being in integrity with our spiritual practice, but it's still just vi as vitally as important. Yeah, and I know that uh, this is something that's really important to both Michelle and I, and we get super worked up about it, <laughs> really impassioned about integrity and having integrity in our practices and, and in our lives and always having that be a thought and a concern and a check-in in, in different ways. And, you know, we can see so many examples out there of people who are compromising their integrity and are doing things based on ego and based on, um, uh, you know, desire and trying to, you know, look a certain way or get something, you know, some sort of power in some sort of way uh, instead of, of continuously dropping in on integrity and what does that mean? And so I think for each one of us, it is up to us to be in this contemplation continuously, consistently, to be asking ourselves these tough questions of where we're at and what do we need to do to be in a higher alignment and to be uh, in a higher state of integrity in our practice and in our lives. Mm -hmm. I want to pull out one of the words that you said there because I think it's really important when we look at, well, how do I know if I'm in integrity or not? Alignment is one of the biggest factors. So looking at, uh, and as we get into our conversation today, we'll be talking about, again, integrity as a practitioner. Um, if you have a professional practice in, in a spiritual modality or a spiritual path, but also integrity in the personal practice. So whether or not you have a professional healing or spiritual practice, 
it's really, really important to be in the integrity. And of course, all these people out there in the world who may not be walking this path, there's loads of examples there of people being in integrity or not. So really, this is, uh, this is a piece, again, Kat and I both feel really, really strongly about this. And we've ranted to each other a couple of times, a handful of times, whenever we come across someone that we see not being in integrity or someone who's out of alignment or someone who's saying one thing when we know that the reality of their lived experience looks totally different. And yet, you know, we all want to put a, a face on social media. So, uh, so speaking to some of those pieces here, and I invite you as we go, we're going to be pulling out some of these themes. So if you're wondering, well, what is it like to be in integrity? How do I know if I'm in integrity? How do I know if I'm out of integrity? How can I recognize integrity in other people? Alignment would be one of those factors. Right. And yeah. So consistent. What is alignment? Yeah. yeah. What is alignment, Michelle? What, what, what would you, yeah. How would you define that if someone is in alignment? Great. If someone's in alignment, they're walking their talk, mm -hmm. they're uh, living their values, they're living their practice. And I think it's really easy, again, in the world that we live in to put a certain face out in the world, whether it's through your online presence or your social media or you're out in the world, and then to have a very different lived reality. And so that would be an example of someone who is out of alignment, meaning they're not living their practice, they're not living their values. But alignment means, uh, you know, you're consistent in your energy, you're congruent in your energy. And, and generally, like, you know, of course, we, you know, we tweak things a little bit, like we all like our filters. And yet, if you're only posting pictures of the sunny, beautiful things, and not of the other things, then that's not a fair representation. But, um, you know, but knowing that having, having that alignment and having a whether or not you're representing it but having that consistent check-in and having that i think a really grounded knowledge of who you are and living that in a um in an expressed way mm -hmm. yeah right. and, and yeah i think that's that's a great that's a great defini definition. And, you know, within that, we are all going to have those times and those moments when we're like, oh my gosh, I am a complete mess right now, right? We get into a relationship or we have something come up in our business or, you know, whatever is happening in our life. Like we, we, we have crisis, we have things that happen. Like it doesn't mean that you're never get upset. It doesn't mean that you never get angry. It doesn't mean that you never have a human experience. It doesn't mean you never eat cake. It doesn't mean that you never, uh, you know, go out and have a cocktail. It doesn't mean that you are somehow going to uh, cordon yourself into some tiny box that represents uh, a spiritual person or a spiritual practitioner or someone who's working with this, you know, work that is not, that is not truth, right? That isn't, that is another form in a way of being out of integrity because we are still humans and we're still living in the world and we're still having relationships. Like, like if I'm so afraid to be in a relationship because it's going to trigger me and push my buttons and, you know, make me cry. And like, sometimes I'm going to feel out of integrity because I'm like, what am I doing here? And the truth is that it's, you know, it's causing me to look deeper. It's causing me to go deeper. And so it's, it's not that you're never going to feel out of sorts. It's that when you do feel out of sorts, you are utilizing the spiritual, energetic, emotional practices and the tools that you've collected to, and the awareness that you're cultivating to work within the context of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Being present with that. And I also want to add in the piece, it also doesn't mean you have to share everything, right? You know, yeah. for those, <laughs> yeah, we don't have to share the most intimate details of, I feel like a hot mess right now. And here's my selfie with the, you know, the crying face. I mean, you can, if you want yeah. to. But honestly, I've seen a little bit of that. That's like, so like, why are you, like, this just feels so manipulative to me where you're just like the big crying face and like, really, are you doing crying face again? Like, come on. <laughs> like, right. And, um, and so that's really. <laughs> an aspect of, or how are you being in integrity with your own process? Mm -hmm. So, for me, and, and again, we're looking at kind of, I, I want to pull out these sort of different facets here of 
what I would call internal integrity. So being in integrity with yourself and within your own, um, your own process, your own practice and external integrity, Mm -hmm. meaning how are you presenting yourself? How are you engaging with other people? And I think this is a piece of that internal integrity. So really looking at, okay, if I feel crunchy, if I feel triggered, if I feel like I'm having a process, how am I internally in integrity to give myself the space and attention and privacy that I need in order to have an effective relationship with my process? And then if you choose to share that when you're no longer in and, and I guess this follows along my philosophy of transparency, where I've chosen to live a very transparent life, meaning I, I talk about all sorts of stuff in this form, uh, in this platform, the podcast, uh, in articles, in, in my weekly subscription I send out, in my Lightworker Portal community. And yet my practice is I only share vulnerable things once I've processed them and, and moved them through in what feels like a complete way. And yeah. that's part of me integrity to myself is I will not share a vulnerable process while I'm still in it because then that means I'm not effectively able to hold a container around it right. and as soon as you put it in the public eye I lose control over what happens with that right well you haven't you haven't mined it right you haven't gotten the gold from it yet and you haven't understood some of the deeper levels now there are people who are sharing on social media and whatnot and so forth because they are actively seeking support for the issues that they're having. But part of, of this, what we're doing is that we are, are cultivating our tools and receiving support from other people. And we're doing so in, in a way that we're able to process our stuff. We're able to look at it and to, to understand, wow, I, that really was painful. And I really, I kind of made a mess of that situation. And what did I learn? Like, like that is always that conversation. Like when you're, when you're seeking to be integrity is to like, keep asking that question. What, what is this here to teach me? Or what did I learn from that? How can I be a better person because of this? You know, these are really important questions to ask because sometimes we, you know, it, it's kind of the, the difference between being in like the victim mindset of like, oh, this stuff is happening to me and I have no control and I don't know what to do to being, wow, this is a painful experience. I'm maybe, I don't even know what to do with this right now. I have no idea how to handle this in my life at this moment. I'm going to go to my practice. I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to go to my mentors and I'm going to be with it and come to a place where I can ask those questions of, How is this teaching me? How is this supporting me? How is this making me a better person? How is this actually leading me to be more in alignment with what I'm saying that I'm here to do? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And knowing that that alignment is a little bit of a moving target, right? Knowing that as we continue to learn from these experiences and as we allow ourselves to be changed, through asking these questions, knowing that we're as continually evolving beings, it's a constant checkpoint of, am I in alignment with who I am now? Am I in alignment with this next phase in my life? Am I in alignment in in this way? And it's not like once you're in alignment, you're done. Once you're in integrity, you're done. (laughs) No, because you're going to keep getting the next level of like where you're going to go for sure. And I'll I'll tell you, um, you know, I have had a relationship in my life for the last four years and it's, it's, it's really blossomed into something that is very amazingly stable and feels incredible to me. And, but I went through a long period of time of it being very intense and very uncomfortable and very triggering and like a lot of emotions, a lot of things and being with that. And being with that in in regard of, wow, this is showing me some stuff. This is showing me about me, about my codependent tendencies, about, uh, you know, the, how I, do I love myself, the way that I love myself, what do I want in my life, what do I not want in my life, what am I standing for, what am I not, like, it was just, it's been a huge growth and learning experience for me. It was, at times, extremely uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's going to happen. But, mm-hmm. you know, at one point I remember thinking, or I was like tuning in with my guides. And I was like, you know, what the fuck really? 
um, this is really hard. This is really challenging. Like, I, I thought that I was over those like really hard, challenging relationships because I had had some some fairly like easeful ones. And uh, I was like, oh, I thought I thought I had like worked through. I thought I had gotten through some of the stuff. And I got this very clear message that was like, well, you weren't actually ready for this. You weren't ready to go into the depth of this stuff and get to the the childhood wounds that were here because you know, we needed you to awaken first. We needed you to go through this process. We needed you to learn these tools. We needed you to have this practice. We needed you to have all of these things, this system in place before we could kind of like throw in, you know, the wild card that was going to shake everything up and, you know, take you to the next level of deeper inquiry and self-work and self-mastery. So uh -huh. going to keep so also, and, and integrity looks different when we're in these different points in the process. So this, um, you know, this thing that Kat's describing is around, well, how, uh, you know, so there's a whole lot of integrity checkpoints in there, but being in, being integrity with personal boundaries, being in integrity and asking questions in, in the personal process, being in integrity with this other person, being in integrity with, uh, with the personal path and trajectory that she's been unfolding, being in integrity with her awakening experiences and with her guides, right? So here are all these different ways that, uh, that we can be in continual inquiry of how aligned am I with this? And even as uncomfortable it is, as it is, what do I need to do in order to be in a position of integrity? And, and here's the kicker. I, I really hope I'm not spoiling this for anybody, but integrity isn't always comfortable. Sometimes it's super uncomfortable and it doesn't mean that it's wrong, right? Because we, we like to feel comfortable and, you know, we, we are always intending, okay, for the highest and greatest good and ideally with ease and grace, ease and grace. I put that in all my intentions and sometimes it's not supposed to go that way. Sometimes it's supposed to be really uncomfortable and it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you're out of integrity. If you're having this like, oh God, I feel like I'm dying experience. And I mean, raise your hand if you've been there right? Yeah. Uh, we, we all have at some point or another, whether you're admitting it or not. And yet how much can we, it's almost this, like this practice in resilience in, am I still choosing this? Mm -hmm. Even though it's really hard, even though it's really uncomfortable, am I, even I'm, though I might be imprisoned in the tower of London for being a sorcerer, am I still choosing this? Am I still in integrity with myself and with my practice and with spirit? And that's really what it comes down to is uh, commitment. I would say if we're kind of picking out our, yeah. our words around integrity, commitment would be another one. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at the people, it's like, you know, in the Tower of London, there's all of these, uh, car they were carving into the stone, um, you, you know, their devotion to God and to Jesus and to their religion and to their path. And, they were there in extreme conditions, suffering and torture and all kinds of insanity there for sometimes years at a time. And, and in other traditions, we see we, the monks have set themselves on fire. We, we see uh, spiritual practitioners and martial artists and teachers who were hunted down and murdered for their wisdom and the, the Druids and their forests were burnt to the ground that they were worshiping in their places of worship. And even today we see people in different parts of the world who even in, in, uh, in America, that they, they are actively seeking to be in integrity with their, their beliefs, which have a higher spiritual, you know, mission who are being uh, targeted for those reasons. So when, when we're looking at that, like that level of commitment, like we, we're like, oh, I really commit to doing, you know, five minutes of practice. <laughs> I really commit to not eating ice cream this week. I really commit to, like, we, we're living in such a soft and fluffy world comparatively to where a lot of our spiritual predecessors have been living, where we are just at this amazing font of knowledge and wisdom and benefit from from generations of people who have had to give everything, their lives, their families, 
everything that they have in order to cultivate these tools and practices and the wisdom that we we're you know can google so <laughs> absolutely and and I want to pull out kind of one, one piece in there of there's a difference between commitment and fanaticism. And when we're looking at, uh, when we're looking at, okay, again, talking about, uh, about this commitment to beliefs, of course, it's very easy. And, and, you know, we've all heard of the crusades, right? It's very easy to look at unhealthy examples of commitment to the point of fanaticism. And this is where, again, commitment is a component of integrity. We're not looking right. at commitment as it's as its own self oh, but it, yeah oh. go ahead oh well, i was going to say so integrity again under our umbrella of this conversation here around integrity is it takes other things into account again that alignment piece right so integrity if we're making our little formula equals alignment plus commitment plus some other stuff that right. we're talking about here right about how how am I aligning with again the highest and greatest good aligning with my relationship to spirit and committed to that even when it's inconvenient right and you know I mean of course this is a great point like we were in, we don't want to be dogmatic fanaticists and and hurting others and it's it is coming from that higher that higher spiritual you know the the higher spiritual um, virtues you know mm -hmm. that we are are looking at kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, like the wisdom, being in a, a, a constant cultivation of those virtues as a high priority in the process that we're in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because it's like, well, it, you know, maybe I, I have a commitment towards this spiritual process and maybe I, you know, I can't, like, we hit that point where sometimes we're like, well, I don't accept you because you're not in this tradition or belief system or whatever. But if we are also in the process of cultivating a virtuous self, then we can sit with kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, you know, these, these pieces and be like, well, whatever you like, we're, it's all good, right? I'm over here being an in integrity and alignment with myself. And that's not to the expense or the trying to force or trying to push my agenda on anyone else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would say values, virtues or values then would be another piece that we're adding to our integrity equation. Right. So looking at, again, um, it's it's not about pushing an agenda. It's not about a dogmatic situation, but regardless. And here's where, you know, I really, really love this. Looking at all these different modalities, looking at all these different mystery schools, when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, a lot of these values and a lot of these uh, all these mystery schools really come down to the same virtues. Right. Of, you know, love thy neighbor. Right. Or compassion. Um, again, wisdom and honoring and all these different, uh, these different schools of thought, essentially, when you get down to the core essence of it, they are based in these virtues and, and these, these values. Right. So I think aligning with that again, you know, if we're doing our equation, integrity equals alignment plus commitment plus values plus again, more stuff that we're right. talking today yeah and I know this is this is one that I'm I'm like I call myself toward because uh, you know I get really excited and I'm like super passionate and I'm like oh what the fuck and oh my gosh and this person and why what that why are they doing why are they doing that like that ah. and then I have to you know whatever it is I have to be like well is that kindness am I radiating kindness towards this person in their process wherever they're at Am I being compassionate in this moment towards <laughs> towards this experience, towards this situation, right? Am I in an alignment with what I say that I am standing for? Mm, um, awesome. I mean, that's a great consideration, and that's hard when we're seeing, and, and here I have a, an example of something that I've recently been um, processing around seeing a reflection of someone that I perceive as being out of integrity mm -hmm. and everything that brings up in me of getting angry and getting, um, you know, feeling pissed off and feeling disappointed and feeling resentful mm -hmm. of this, 
person. And so I, at that point, you know, again, it's that internal and external integrity. Uh, you know, so what Kat was saying about, okay, how can I cultivate kindness and compassion and understanding for this person, but also be internally an integrity of they crossed a boundary. This is compromising the, the sense of safety of, of myself and of somebody else who's directly impacted by the situation. And it, in order for me to be an internal integrity, there's, I mean, there's a lot of pieces at play. It's not directly uh, in my life, it's in somebody else's life who I care about. And so I'm, of course, getting upset and all ruffled on their behalf. And yet it's not my position to step into to enforce a boundary. So there's a whole lot of moving pieces there, um, which has been a really interesting practice. But again, our internal and, and, and external integrity uh, checkpoints and the way in which we're aligning with all these different pieces, they might be telling us different things and yet they support again, um, you know, okay, in this case, I can still have compassion for this person while knowing that they crossed a boundary and taking steps to enforce a boundary and also s staying a little bit hands off. Mm -hmm. you know, it's very complicated. Yeah. As life is right. All of these different situations and things will continue to come up to be like, okay, well, that's an unexpected situation that I'm in. That's interesting that that would be happening right now. What am I going to do with this? And mm -hmm. I think um, when you talk about boundaries, and we've done a lot of work on boundaries, one of our earliest first episodes or whatever was on boundaries. So if you want to check that out, please do. Um, and in different regards, we've talked about boundaries a lot because boundaries are really important for healers and sensitives and so on, all, all of us. So when you're talking about boundaries and, and you're in that consideration of both the internal and the external, right, is that there are some of us who have an easeful time at looking at how do I be compassionate and, and, uh, and kind and forgiving and stuff towards the other, but we're not actually turning that inward and having kindness, compassion, forgiveness toward ourself and enforcing our boundaries. And having integrity means that you understand your boundaries, where they're at, what they are, what that means to you, and you're able to communicate them. Because mm -hmm. one of the ways that we are often find ourselves being out of integrity, out of alignment, is because we didn't know what our boundary was. We didn't know what the other person's boundary was. We crossed a boundary. We didn't talk about it. We didn't get consent. We didn't, you know, whatever it is. That is a really easy way for us to fall out of integrity in our life, in our business, wherever. Absolutely. Or I'll add to that. Somebody crossed our boundary because we didn't effectively communicate it or set our, all of us up for success in terms of holding to that boundary. So yeah, boundaries are a huge component of integrity. Again, you know, internal boundaries, external boundaries, and being willing to take a stand for your boundaries. Yeah. So uh, everything that we've been talking about thus far can be applied again, whether or not you have a professional practice. This all, pretty much every example we gave was stuff that's coming up in our own personal experience not within the context of a business. And yet I think we're gonna shift gears a little bit now to look at some of the ways in which we're asked to be in integrity in our practice. And so mm -hmm. this part, um, inviting again, all of this still applies even if you're not a professional spiritual practitioner, but especially if you are. So let's look at some of these pieces of how do we be in integrity, not only with our spiritual path, but also with our practice. Because as soon as we bring other people into play, what is, you know, if we're taking on clients, if we're, if we have a, a media platform, if we have, you know, something like this, right? There's extra considerations of integrity that are involved of how do we engage with the practice? The mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a really big uh, topic and it goes into lots of things around uh, being an ethical practitioner around having an ethical, you know, container that you're creating for, for your work. And um, you know, all of these things are still, in play. We talked about virtues and values, commitment, alignment, boundaries, all of that's going to go into your personal practice. There's lots of ways that um, we can come out of integrity. And something that I see a lot is that, uh, is that we 
can have a tendency to like push ourselves to be um, offering or facilitating or giving things to people, doing things to people that we haven't either properly been trained in, we don't have the full uh, range of experience of it, like we haven't actually mastered or trained it in our own system, in our own body. We haven't done it with uh, anybody like we were like, okay, well, I'm going to charge you $5,000 for this thing. And I haven't actually ever done it before. I haven't ever led anybody through this process. I don't know what's going to happen, but we don't tell people that, right? We're just like, it's this great thing. Um, where, I mean, I just, I see this a lot where we're making claims to give someone the the money, the sex, the love, the lifestyle, the whatever, without having had those results in anybody that we've worked with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really, really big one. And uh, I'll add to that also, there's an aspect of, oh, I took a training, that means I'm fully qualified. Maybe, maybe not. And in the case of this work that we're talking about here, you know, everything that, that we do in, uh, in our practices and everything that we cover on this podcast, this is really deep, sensitive stuff. And mastery is not attained through a weekend workshop. It's not attained in a year. You know, this is a lifelong process. And, you know, we, we definitely have no illusions about being anywhere near close to done or close to fully actualized. Right. And, and it's claiming otherwise is really irresponsible and that would be out of integrity. Right. And so I think that, you know, there's a realm of honesty of knowing again, that it is a, a process. And I think, you know, in, in some of the cases like, you know, Kat, you're talking about, um, you know, charging a whole bunch of money right out of the gate. Like, yeah, not, not super in integrity, not super responsible, but how do we, uh, how do we be in integrity? Well, we be honest with people of, Hey, this is a new program. I'm a, you know, I'm learning this. I'm trying this out. I have this new offering. Do you want to come step into that with me and know that I'm still learning? I'm still practicing and doing this work with you is going to be really helpful for me to up level my practice and my craft so I can offer this to other people in a more effective way. And usually that's something we can do at a reduced rate or do with, um, you know, that, that full disclosure on the table. Like I will, I will very freely admit that the first year that I taught I am alchemy, which was last year, I gave all of my students the, uh, at, and I charged a, a slightly reduced rate. It was still a, a very fair rate because I felt very confident in what I was offering and all of the material was, um, was something that was grounded and integrated. But I let all of my students know, this is the first year that this course is happening. I don't have a manual in place. We're going to have a certain degree of improvisation and flexibility because it's real time practical magic. Are you with me? And I mm -hmm. had a whole group students who said yes, right. because they trusted me yeah. and disclosure and full, um, giving full in uh, informed consent, essentially you're mm -hmm. inviting your clients into an informed agreement. Right. And I'll tell you for my programs, generally I will, the first time I run a program, it's at quite a reduced rate. I mean, sometimes it's just so super silly. I'm not making any money at all because I really want to know is this the best structure? Is, am I explaining this well? Does this land? Is this helpful? Is this how it works? Right. And then I will build up from there. And the next time I run it, I'll charge more and charge more. So if you see a program I'm running, do it now. And then, <laughs> because it will be more extensive later on because I'm learning through the process and I'm growing, I'm growing the materials, I'm growing the, the infrastructure of the program and so on. Um, and like, that's, that's an option. You don't have to be doing this because someone else is. Um, let's just for a second, let's talk about Reiki, okay? Because Reiki has turned into some kind of crazy weekend warrior program instead of being a true uh, experience. I, mean, I know when I took Reiki one, they were like, here's Reiki one, go and practice on yourself every single day and go away and I don't wanna see you here again for six months to a year. And so you can do Reiki too. And that was a very clear, like it was a boundary. It was like, this is how this works. You have to go practice it and then come back. And now when I see Reiki trainings, they're like, get your Reiki master in a weekend and then you can be a Reiki master and then you can teach Reiki. 
Like, what? Really? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is something, you know, this particular <clears throat> modality, I think, has, and, and this is where, you know, we ask some questions about, okay, well, what is, what's the balance of that? So yes, there's, um, you know, what is lost, but what is that offering? And, uh, you know, I think one of the pieces that is lost, absolutely, what you're talking about is integration and context and having practice and having dedication. And, you know, for somebody to spend six months to a year every day working on themselves every single day, you know, that's a different level of commitment and mastery that is attained to create that much more of a foundation to then step into the next uh, the next practice, which is, you know, we looked traditionally, that's how apprenticeship works. That's how training works is you don't get all the information until you're ready to, until you're ready for it. You know, looking at any mystery school, looking at any initiatory practice, you do not have access to the next stage until you have mastered the previous stage. So that's something that um, that I feel like is lost in this, but then also looking at, okay, so there's that aspect of integrity, but there's also the aspect of integrity of how can we make this knowledge more accessible to the people to even, even if it's not fully integrated, but give them tools to raise the vibration of consciousness and then know ideally, hopefully that these people are going to seek out mentorship in other ways. It's not, I mean, I'm not condoning either. I'm not condoning the weekend warrior Reiki practice. I'm not condoning not doing that, you know, right. but just knowing that like we're in a position now where people have access, people can Google anything, right? People the Reiki symbols, for example, which when I learned them, it was my Reiki master handed me a sheet of paper and I memorized all the symbols in the class. And she said, keep the sheet of paper only as long as you need it and then burn it when you feel comfortable. Right. That and you they're, in, they're in books now. And so, but yeah. this is the piece is it's up to us to have personal integrity. It's up to us to go, Hmm, maybe I'm not ready to train Reiki practitioners the week after I got my Reiki master certification that I did in a weekend. Maybe I should go in and actually work on people and see what the results are, see what people say, see what happens in my body, see what my transformation is like, see what's going on with me, see how this is affecting me so I can understand it, I can explain it, I can be present with people through their process so that I'm not just running around energy working people, I'm actually serving their transformation and their change in their life. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where some of this, again, um, internal integrity and, and checkpoints comes in of what is being asked of me in my path that I can step into and feel ready, even if I feel nervous, even if I feel apprehensive, even if I feel like I, I don't have all the information or, you know, how can I trust and how can I put myself in a position of service? And that's where, um, again, I see this um, and, and aspects, let's be totally honest, of uh, people wanting to make money through their spiritual practice. And I will put a firm stake in the ground and say, I am a huge fan of practitioners making money and being able to support themselves. Like this is another piece of integrity. And I actually just um, kind of not got into it in any kind of serious way, but I definitely had a little bit of a um, very minor confrontation with someone yesterday about... Um, about that very issue where I took issue with someone who has a platform, a massive platform, um, this, you know, group online of uh, almost 400,000 people, light workers, where I have consistently posted free educational materials, where I have posted, um, you know, a lot of in invites to podcasts and to free classes. And I posted an invitation to a very low cost class that immediately was flagged and deleted. And I was directed by the administrators, the admins of the group to go read the guidelines about um, non non commercial purposes. And one of the things I said was, uh, you know, I firmly believe that any group that is not supporting lightworkers and making a living doing what they're doing is not doing their job. Because it's, you know, again, it's important to, to support not only in the energetic realm, but also the financial realm. And however, back to the original piece around this, the balance of that is 
not again charging thousands and thousands of dollars for something you learned yesterday or maybe not immediately monetizing a practice but letting it integrate into your system letting yourself master it so again i think there's this balance of how do we be in integrity of asking for money for our services in a way that is aligned and healthy and uh, and also giving ourselves the space to integrate the work and give it time to settle Mm -hmm. And we get excited and that's okay. I totally get excited. I'm like doing something and I'm like, oh my God, like this is the best thing ever. I have to teach everybody this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a, like a core main archetype of, of what I run is a teacher. Like I, I teach, I teach things like that's, that's, that's um, also part of my own integration process and my own discovery and my own uh, part of, of bringing what I'm here to bring to the world. And so that's me having to sit with integrity, like, okay, where am I in my process? If I'm teaching this thing, am I going to be able to support people as they go through their process? Am I going to be able to, to handle whatever might be shaken up through this experience I'm giving them, you know, whatever it is, sometimes we get really excited about something and we want to to teach something or share something or offer something, you know, and we haven't really thought through the repercussions of what it is that we're doing mm -hmm. um, with, with people, with their energy and their, their physical bodies. And I think that that comes to another place of integrity in our business is where we, we need to know our clients and we need to know our people. We need to know like their their physical health and well-being, medications, trauma, like things that they're going through and have gone through that will, will, can be affected by whatever treatment protocol that we are utilizing. And if, if that treatment is really actually going to be good for that person. Absolutely. Yeah. So as soon as we get into, especially working with, um, you know, uh, for example, contraindications of working with different herbs or working with different, um, again, practices. I know in the Taoist practices that you're doing, there's, uh, you know, Kat left these massive textbooks at my house. So I've been kind of reading through some of those. And there's a whole lot of like, if this person has this particular thing, don't do this thing, right? Yeah. And the the way that we know that is by study and practice and integration and by being in integrity with um, the training and knowing that uh, there are so much in the realm of spiritual practice that is intuitive, that doesn't necessarily come from going to a class or a training or study. And there's so much that is. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's also an aspect of being in integrity with your study and uh, you know, doing your homework on, okay, you're channeling healing practices, but do you actually know what effects they're causing, like Kat was saying? And that's where, again, we have this nice intersection of uh, have your intuitive initiations, have your experiences and follow the, the guidance of your teachers, but also do your homework and follow up to see, okay, what is that related to and how can I support that? And how can I be more informed intellectually about my intuitive relationship with this practice? Mm -hmm. And how are you supporting people, right? Like if you're doing really, uh, you know, profound activation work and shamanic work, like that person might need a follow up. That person might need um, some additional support in some kind of way. And I know that I, especially having um, worked with people who went to other practitioners or shamans or whatever, and they were like, well, this person completely opened up my psychic centers and turned me on completely and I can see everything and hear everything. And then they just disappeared because I had finished my, you know, thing with them and my $3,000 was gone. And like, there was no, there was no, there were no practices. There was no homework. There was no, uh, context. There was no support to deal with what was opened up in the experience. And there are a lot of people who have very powerful, intuitive, shamanic, uh, you know, really incredible energy. You're amazing healers. You, you've, you've got a natural innate gift and a lot of power, a lot of force moving through you. But if that power and force and and activation and vibration that you're bringing is activating people to a place where they can't actually handle it because of 
early childhood trauma because of their situation, their home situation that they're in, can't handle this kind of activation, their job, whatever, that their situation is, they can't handle it. That is not responsible. So mm -hmm. that is not an integrity for you to, uh, well, this is my work. It's like, well, yeah, that's your work. And this is such a balance. It's such a balance because we will actually mess up. I have messed up. I've blown people out of the fucking water and whacked them out and then had to be like, okay, let's dial this back and let me help you to come back in your body and re integrate this. And let's, you know, needing to support them to be able to integrate what, what came up or what was happening mm -hmm. for them energetically and spiritually. Totally. Yeah. So this is, you know, again, what is it like to be an ethical and responsible practitioner knowing that uh, people have different levels of energetic clearance, let's say, you know, meaning that people's systems are different degrees of open, people have uh, relate to different guides, people have different layers of exposure and, and knowledge and context. And that something that we might have fully integrated and, and feel very uh, very powerful in might be unhealthy or or too much for somebody else so this is where again part of being an in integrity i think is simply um you know simply practice and uh and simplicity i would say bringing again this like uh, i like to think of the idea of microdosing myself to people knowing that again you know p.s in case i spoiler alert i hope i'm not spoiling this for anybody we're all energetic beings and we all have our own unique frequencies. We all have our own, um, our own soul codes. We all have our own flavor of energy. And when we're coming together to work with somebody in a healing capacity, especially, which is a very intimate connection, we're resonating with their energy. So if you have your energy that is very, very cultivated and very powerful and you're channeling big energies, right? And you're coming to somebody who, or coming up with somebody who has a lot of trauma or a lot of wounding, et cetera, knowing minimum effective dose, min, minimum, I want to like triple underline that. Like how can you microdose the flavor of your energy to somebody in order to have the, the maximum effect that they need and that they can handle in that moment, which might seem very small. Let's be real of healing. And this is, I think another facet of integrity is non-attachment to what their process looks like. And we might want something for our clients that they don't want for themselves or that they're not ready for. It's not about what we want for them. It's about how can we support them? How can we be in integrity in the highest unfolding of their process, no matter what that looks like. And again, we might see, and I've been in this position before, I'm sure, um, you know, Kat, I'm sure you have too. Actually, I know you have too. And all you practitioners out there, you've probably been in this position where you're working with somebody and you see what is possible for them and you want so badly to support them and you want them to have this cathartic healing experience, but they're not ready and they don't want it. And they dig in their heels and sometimes we push and it, we get pushed back and it's not okay. So how do we be in integrity with, it's not what I want for them, it's what are they asking for my help with, and also knowing sometimes people aren't going to ask for what they actually need, so how can I invite them into the full unfolding of their process? Again, very delicate, we're talking delicate balance with all of this here, so giving the minimum effective dose of our energy in order to support their process, no matter what that looks like, no matter what we want for them. Right. And, you know, like you said, this is practice. This is experience. This is doing the stuff over and over again, making mistakes, figuring out something new, understanding yourself at another level and coming full circle back to, you know, where we were earlier is that integrity is a lot of just checking in with yourself of mm -hmm. getting really comfortable with being with yourself being in the experience of, okay, what is happening here? What am I feeling? What do I know? What do I sense? You know, and where do I go from there? And sometimes giving yourself the space to just keep checking in. Okay, am I coming from my ego? Am I coming from my wounding? Am I coming from a place of I'm not enough. Am I coming from a place of trying to make something happen that doesn't need to happen? Where am I coming from? Where am I orienting from? Am I orienting from my higher spiritual self, my 
you know, where I see myself in, <laughs> in, in, in the grand scheme of things, what I know the ultimate truth of what I am is, or am I orienting from kind of a lower frequency, something that's not going to be in integrity, right? So it's coming back and asking those questions over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I'd love to, um, you know, as we're kind of drawing to a close here, let's offer people some tools, again, kind of recapping. If we find ourselves out of integrity, you know, first of all, how do we recognize that? And then how do we come back into alignment? Sometimes it's hard to recognize it. Um, and a lot of times uh, what <laughs> I find for myself is when I'm, um, what do you call this? When, when I'm uh, defending myself, <laughs> when I'm defending myself and I'm trying to be like, I no, I'm right. Or I, you know, I have a reason to feel this way or, you know, this person is messed up or something like I have to check in with myself. Like, okay, wait, am, am I, am I, where's this defensiveness coming from? Why am I defensive? Like what, What's the deeper thing that's, that's triggering me here that I feel defensive for some kind of reason? Mm, good. Yeah. Great awareness. So knowing like, okay, is there a trigger or defense that's coming up? Um, one of my awarenesses is I think it's a little easier for me and I'm sure probably a lot of you can relate. Um, it tends to be a little easier for me to be in external integrity, like in alignment with my integrity, with how I'm relating to other people and my agreements and, and putting myself out in the world than internal integrity at times. And I know one of my things that I am continuing to work on is one of our favorite topics, boundaries, and knowing that at times I have really solid boundaries and I feel really good about enforcing them. But uh, I tend to in any kind of close connection, meaning partners or, or close friends or people that I feel very connected to, I tend to compromise my own boundaries in order to accommodate somebody else's um, needs or desires, etc. And that's something that I know about myself. That's something that I know, okay, when I'm in relationship, I tend to not hold true to my boundaries. Okay. So because I'm being in external integrity, meaning like being in relationship with this person at the expense of my own um, and my own needs, my own boundaries. So I know that that's one of my awarenesses. And whenever that happens, um, you know, I, sometimes I'm more successful at it than others. Let's be totally honest. It's uh, a continuing learning process for me, but often what needs to happen is I know, okay, in order for me to come back into right relation with my own internal integrity, I need to take a step back. I need this person out of my field. I need to leave. I need to just be alone for a minute and recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really my... important. That's really important. And, you know, especially for, we're very sensitive. We're, we're all empaths. We're all feeling. So we're all vibrating with the people around us. And so a lot of times we can't get clear. We can't like really get a good handle on what's going on until we take space from the person or the situation that we're in and we remove ourselves completely and go take a walk and go outside and clear our head and, and find our center, find our, our core and, you know, come, come again from that place, you know, because if we're just in the midst of an experience, a lot of times we're just responding and reacting and that can lead us to do or say something that's not an integrity. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I had the experience yesterday, actually, of being in a very triggered state and, uh, and knowing that I needed to take space and also simultaneously trying to intellectually make decisions and navigate a couple of things. And I just had to shut it all down. And it was the, um, the, the way in which I righted being in integrity was by saying, I don't need to make any of those decisions right now. I don't need to be in this state right now. This state is not helpful for me. It doesn't feel good. It's not helpful for what's happening. So I need to step away. And, uh, and it's almost a like, I guess the advice is kind of like, don't try to fix it while you're in it. 
also. If there's a, um, you know, cause it's a thousand times harder if we're feeling triggered or if we're like, you know, like Kat and I talked about getting all impassioned about people being out of integrity and we, we see this and I know I've, you know, I've learned don't say anything while you're in that state. Don't yeah. try to don't write the don't, post. Don't, no, don't, don't try to do anything. Try to enforce anything while you're pissed off, while you're feeling feeling the feelings, while you're having the experience of um, of being, you know, in whatever very human, very understandable position you're in. But simply step back. And uh, and another point that I really enjoy contemplating is, okay, what do I actually need right now? Regardless of what that looks like, regardless of how convenient it is, but what do I need right now? Or what is needed right now? What is the highest possible outcome of this situation? And how can I support the highest possible outcome, the best possible outcome of this situation? And what does that look like? Instead of doing what I really want to do and, you know, calling the person out and saying something nasty or blah, 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 because then that would be out of integrity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say do some breath work, go take a run, do some energy practices, do some yoga, do some Qigong, do something with your body, something with your breath, uh, you know, move and shake whatever is, you know, affecting you off before moving forward. If you feel like you're in any kind of a place where you're about to do something out of integrity, that's a little dumb, uh, you know, and you've already done it, like take some space. Um, yeah. And, you know, for me, it, I, I can ruminate about stuff. That's something that can come up for me. It's just like, oh, how to fix the situation or what should I be saying to this person or what should I have said to this person or, or whatever. It's super not helpful. Um, usually, uh, and you know, something that I started to do is be like, wow, I, I'm just gonna, this is so funny because it does not sound like something that I would say because it sounds a little bit cheesy, but I don't think I'm just going to pray for this person. So, you know, I sound like, you know, Southern grandma over here, but I'm just, I'm going to pray for this person and, you know see how open my heart can be in this experience and try not to take something personally and, you know, try to sort myself out from that place of like, okay, instead of ruminating my thoughts around like things and what, and what not, like, okay, what would happen if I actually just shifted to bringing in a prayerful space right now? So that's, that's a tool I've been, I've been using to, when, when I'm coming up against stuff. How's it going? What are you noticing? Um, you know, I'm noticing that there's a, a shift in the energy because it's like, oh, I, I, I can move out of, because I'm very good at fixing things and solving problems. So I can move out of, oh, I'm going to fix this thing and solve this problem and like come up with the whatever perfect solution. Uh, and instead just be like, oh, I'm just going to kind of take my hand off the wheel a little bit and let it go a little bit and find my center. So it's like, instead of having this outward kind of focus of fixing, it's like, oh, wait, let me just be in my heart. And, you know, because it's like, well, if I'm going to pray, it's like, I'm going to, it's going to land me in my heart at some point. So like, okay, well, if I'm in my heart and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I kind of just feel better. I, uh, maybe I don't need to say anything or maybe I could just be nice to that person or, you know, whatever that is. I get to, to find a way to cultivate those virtues. Right. So that's my new, my, my practice on that one. I love it. Uh, <laughs> that's great. I hear that. I'm like, okay, yeah, I could probably do some more of that too. Right. <laughs> And again, it, integrity is a moving target, right? All of these things that we've talked about here today, this is by no means are we claiming to be perfect at this. Let's, let's be very, very clear. We're, we're obviously letting you in on our, our, deep, our deep, dark, you know, issues that we have going on where we're, you know, where none of us are perfect. Um, yeah. And, and we have that's the path of integrity because if you were perfect, you wouldn't need to worry about being in integrity. You would be full of your ego and you would be completely out of integrity because you would just be like, I'm perfect and nobody's perfect. So, you know, there we go. Yeah. Are. 
And so being, and actually, I guess this is the one last piece that I want, want to align with. I think um, one of the things that drives me the most bonkers is uh, in terms of witnessing lack, what I perceive as lack of integrity is practitioners who um, either shut down or have a barrier that doesn't let their humanity shine through. Mm. Uh, yeah. And right. Where we see like, okay, well, someone's putting on a face or someone's, you know, um, taking selfies and, and captioning them pure joy and radiant, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I know for a fact, okay, well, this is what their life actually looks like. Right. And this is what they're, um, you know, after they're done their sessions, like they go kind of unplug and, um, you know, n maybe not do their practices and, uh, and drink more than they might be advisable a question mark, you know? And so it's, again, this like, um, you know, sort of the, the non, non alignment or the lack of, um, honesty and reflection. And I don't think there's anything wrong with letting our humanity show up. And I know sometimes it's uncomfortable, but again, you know, back to what I was sharing at the very beginning of I, my personal boundary of that is I don't share anything while I'm still in it because that feels unsafe to me. And also I know that I wouldn't be able to hold the kind of space if, if it triggered anybody else, or if, you know, somebody else had a question or whatever, if I was still in it, then I wouldn't be able to hold the kind of space that I would want to or need to. So I wait until I'm no longer in the thing, but then I share the humanity because if somebody can learn something from my process or from, from my experience, then, then I want to share that. I want to be available. I want to be human. You know, I, I want to be, I am human. I want to seem human, you know? Um, and also, pretending like there's no use in pretending we have it all figured out. So I, I feel very um, irritated by rigidity around that. When I see that in other people, I feel very, um, I guess it, it, it kind of pings me because it feels like a lack of honesty and it feels like a rejection of the parts of ourselves that are not polished and that might stumble on things or that might, you know, not do a practice for a night. Like, you know, raise your hand if there are days when you don't do practice, right? Everybody. Me, like, me, me, me. Right. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So, and, and it's okay. And it's okay. And everything is okay. What we are, we, we are, we are here lovingly holding the space for is for each one of us to be like, Hmm here's my deeper question. And it's not to beat the shit out of myself. It's not to make myself shame. It's not to make myself feel bad. It's not to make myself uh, quit my, quit my healing practice because I, I didn't whatever, or I want to whatever, or I have a bad relationship right, right now, or I'm, you know, I, I like to drink wine or <laughs> whatever the situation is. Right. It's like, okay, you're human. You have things that are, that are there. You have flaws. You have desires. I like to eat sugar. I like to have a glass of wine now and then. Like, you know, I eat real fucking bread. Like, I am not, not and, and I'm great, right? Everything is good. Everything is perfect. I am a wonderful, amazing human being. You get to be both. You get mm -hmm. to be in integrity, in alignment, and always improving. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So let's celebrate all of our, our moving targets of integrity and know that we're all on that path of how to be in integrity in our spiritual. So thank you so much for joining us here today. We gave you a lot to think about. Yeah, I think so this ended enjoy. up being a long thing. I don't know. <laughs> it did. It ended up being... Um, probably about an hour, I guess. So we gave, we covered a lot of ground here, but I invite you to go ahead and circle back and know that, um, you know, Kat gave some really good pointers of like, if we're in a space of feeling like either I stepped out of integrity or I'm about to, or something, do something with your body, do something with your breath, um, you know, set some intention or, or take some prayer time and then reset, recalibrate, take some space, dial back. And we also gave you lots of tools of, uh, you know, what are the components of integrity? So around commitment, alignment, values and virtues, practice, consistency, um, boundaries, you know, boundaries. boundaries. Yes. And, Triple boundaries. and like, I'm sorry. You know, Great. like, Hey, I, 
I kind of messed up there. I didn't really, I wasn't thinking or I didn't, oh, I didn't say that right. Or I missed whatever. I, I'm sorry. I'm human and, and I apologize. And mm. just to be, be okay with, with being able to be with that. Uh, yeah. and, and being okay with, with accepting apologies, you know, when somebody is like, oh, wow, I, I'm really, I'm sorry. Like, okay, okay, all right, I can accept your apology, <laughs> you know, like yeah. both of those pieces too. Let's throw that one in there at the end. Oh, that's super important. I'm really glad you threw that in. Yes. Okay. So apologizing, right? Yay. We <laughs> love that. So this was, yeah, a lot of material, but there's a lot of really good practices and awarenesses in there for you. So again, yeah. if you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shaman Sister Sessions. You can also find us online, shamansistersessions.com. You can send us an email. If there's anything that really resonated with you, you want to get in touch, you can email us at shamansistersessions at gmail.com or go ahead and find us on Facebook and send us a message there and we'd love to get back to you. Uh, you can also find mine and Kat's independent websites. We have different courses, different work. Uh, one of the things that I am offering right now is a, uh, I'm enrolling people in early bird registration for I Am Lightworker Healership Training in October. So if you're interested in that, know that it's capped at 20 people. Um, I'm offering to current clients first and then former students and clients. I'm opening it up to my community uh, here next week and then I'm opening it up to everybody else um, starting, uh, starting in that kind of second week of July. So please go ahead and shoot me, shoot me a message as soon as possible. If you'd like more information to claim your early bird spot, it's four days of intensive healership training, really amazing practices. And I'd love to see you there. And that's going to be epic, Michelle. Um, so right now I'm just beginning to launch my five elements for empaths course, which is going to take place, uh, starting towards the end of July, an eight week course. It's going to be online for the sensitive, sensitive souls out there who need, uh, more energy practices, the details, getting into deep study of Chinese energetic medicine and what that means for being able to move through the tough emotions and being able to handle being super sensitive in the world so you can bring your gifts to the world and if you are on watching this if you've gotten all the way to the end then uh if you reach out to me and you register for five elements for empaths which i haven't even announced out into the world yet so send me an email or a message find me on facebook um i am going to be offering you a special bonus which is my energetic mastery mastery portaling class which is super crazy epic. Uh, and you can uh, take that for free and have it before you even begin the other course. So you already have a really solid practice to get you started. And uh, I have a webinar coming up next week called um, Empath Misconception, the Empath Misconception. And that's going to be amazing. You can find that on Eventbrite. You can just search Catherine Bird on Eventbrite and you'll come up with that. Uh, or yeah, I don't even know if I put it on my website yet, but I will be doing that soon. So <laughs> reach out, find me on Facebook, find Michelle, come and study with us. Let's, let's all rise into the next level of mastery and integrity together. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. We, we both have a lot of stuff going on, so there's plenty of opportunities to, uh, to engage with us. And you know how to find us. Go ahead, Shaman Sister Sessions, Sylvia, Shaman Sister Sessions online, uh, or finding us independently works too. So thanks. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know how this goes, and we'll see you next time.